Today in our 2018 GMC Canyon, we're going to be installing Airlift's Ride Control Air Helper Springs, part number AL59533. This is what your airbags are going to look like when it's installed. As you can see, it goes between your leaf spring and your frame to give that extra support. It's going to have independent lines for the left and the right side, so you can help even out that load going down the road in case you have an uneven weight distribution. The operating range on these is between 5 and 100 PSI, 5 being an unloaded vehicle, and 100 being the maximum load rating of 2,000 pounds. Now do remember that this extra carrying capacity does not increase the amount that your vehicle can haul, it just supports that much weight to help even out that load. If you're trying to decide on which suspension enhancement system is best for you, if you compare the ones that we've got here, like our air helper springs, this is going to be the most customization. It's going to allow you to compensate for various loads by increasing or decreasing the amount of inflation. These will also help even out loads that are different from side to side, since they can be inflated independently from one another. When you compare them to the bump stop styles, those are always the same pressure all the time. As they don't have any air, it's just the pressure of the rubber on the spring. Those provide no adjustment on your loads. The other option is your leaf spring style, and those do have some varying adjustments, but they only have a few settings that can be chosen from. So you're stuck with one of the two, three, maybe five settings that's available with those. This is going to be independently, infinitely variable in its range. To give you an idea of how much our air helper springs is going to help while our vehicle is loaded down, we're going to give you some measurements first while it's unloaded. So in the rear, unloaded, from the ground, to the bottom edge of the fender well, it's going to measure about 37 inches. And in the front, it's going to measure about 35 and a half inches. We've now put a significant load in the back of our truck bed. And as you can see, it's dropped it down to 34 and a half inches. So we've dropped down two and a half inches from our normal ride height here in the rear. And here in the front, we're measuring 36 and a quarter inch. So we've raised up the front end by about three quarters of an inch. Now that we've got our vehicle loaded back up and our airbags installed, we'll recheck our measurements. And as you can see here, we're right back to 37. So now we're even with where we were when we were at our unloaded ride height. And we come back and check our front, and we're at 35 and a half again. So our front end's been dropped back down to its factory ride height as well. This can help improve safety because it's going to allow your suspension to operate as it was before, increasing your tire wear because they're not going to be off camber. It's going to allow your brakes to work properly because the weight's going to be distributed to the front as it was before, and your headlights are going to aim properly down towards the road instead of up in the air. We'll begin with a little pre-assembly. We'll need to put the quick connect air fitting in the top of our airbag. That'll just thread on. You'll then tighten it down with a half inch wrench until at least two threads have been covered by the pre-applied sealant. Next we're going to pre-assemble the top half. Take the large opening at the bottom, slide it over your air fitting, then take the plastic nut, slide it over the air fitting, and thread it onto the threads around the outside. This will eventually come in contact with the small ears on each side. You can then twist the bracket to tighten it the rest of the way down. Now, the, this particular bracket we're assembling is going to be for our driver's side. This will be towards the outside and we want our air fitting facing towards the rear. So make sure you have it facing in the direction for the appropriate side. Now we're on the bottom side of our airbag where we'll install the bracket. Again, this is the driver's side, so it'll be labeled L for left. Align the opening up with the hole in the bottom of your airbag and thread in the small tapered screw. Tighten it down with a large Phillips head screwdriver. You want to make sure these are angled the same on this face and in this direction as this is going to sit on our leaf spring. We'll now take our airbag and we're going to put it on top of our leaf spring. We'll need to go on the outside of the frame with the upper bracket and on top the leaf spring with the lower. There's a small flange here in the front. You want to make sure that sits on top of your factory U-bolt on the rear side behind the axle. Then take the U-bolt provided in the kit, slide it over top of the lower bracket through the small slits on each side. 
until it drops down over your leaf spring. Then place the lower part of the clamp on the bottom of the U-bolt, followed by a flat washer and a lock nut. You'll also put a flat washer and a lock nut on the other side of the U-bolt. Then tighten them down evenly, working back and forth using a 9 16th socket. And torque them to the specifications outlined in your instructions. Now if you had your vehicle jacked up by the frame, you're going to want to lower it down just enough to where your suspension comes up and the upper bracket on the back side contacts the bottom of the frame. Once it's contacted the bottom of the frame, you want to make sure that it's on the same plane straight with your lower bracket. Once you've got those lined up, we're going to mark the center hole right in the center with our paint stick. You can also use a center punch. And we're going to mark the lower rearmost hole as well. Then I'll drill out both of your marks with a 5 16 drill bit. It's a little bit easier if you lift the vehicle back up by the frame again as that drops the tire down out of your way. I like to mark the center of each hole with the drill before I drill them out completely. Now that you've got your holes drilled out, line them back up and you're going to take the self-tapping screws provided in the kit and start them in each of the holes. You'll use a 9 16 socket to start these. I like to make sure that I get them both started before fully tightening them down. Then torque all of your hardware to the specifications in your instructions. You'll repeat the same procedure on the other side. We'll need to prepare our heat shield now. Take both the tabs, bend them at a 90 degree from the face, and then we're going to bend it 90 degree again back the way towards the outside. This will give us a small air gap between our heat shield and our exhaust so it'll dissipate heat. Then use the hose clamps provided in the kit to clamp around the ears that we had just made. We're going around the rear resonator part just behind our muffler here because we want it to keep the heat off of the airbag that's right next to it. The kit comes with two large and two small hose clamps. If the resonator here at the back is still too wide for the large hose clamp, you can take the small hose clamp and mix it with the large one to create an extra long hose clamp. You can do this two times so you have enough to go around the larger resonator. Next we'll need to run our air line from our airbag back to a location in the rear where we're going to mount the fittings so we can air up our bags. Go ahead and stretch your hose out and then you're going to cut it so that you have two equal lengths. We're using a special set of hose cutters here. You can pick these up here at eTrailer.com. This will ensure that when you cut your hose, it'll be a nice square even cut that'll seal properly inside of our air fitting. The air fitting hose at the top of the airbag is a quick connect fitting. So you'll just take the end that we previously cut and poke it right in. I like to push it in and out a little bit just to make sure that it's fully seated. We come out of our airbag, we go up above the frame, we cross over the frame, we attach it to the wiring that goes above our spare tire. The inflation nozzles here at the end is where you can now attach your license plate. You would just slide your license plate over it and tighten it down with the nuts that we have on there. And this way you can inflate them independently, the right side on this side and the left side with this side. Now inflate your airbags and make sure there's no leaks. Inflate both sides evenly, making sure not to exceed its capacities. A little air goes a long way, so it doesn't take very long to get it to inflate to the pressure you desire. Now spray your nozzles with some soapy water to make sure that there's no leaks. If you see the presence of bubbles, you know you've got a leak. If you don't see any, then you don't have to worry about it. Check each fitting and each airbag for leaks. And that completes our installation of Airlift's Ride Control Air Helper Springs on our 2018 GMC Canyon.